good. It's here. Upside down. Looks like we took some damage there. Yes, it was delivered upside down. All right. Uh, we have an upgrade. This is the uh, Blue Eddy AC500, uh, 5,000 watt head unit. Uh, my current AC300 is uh, 3,000 watts, so more power. Uh, same basic physical size. It uses the same batteries, uh, the same B300 batteries, um, but you need some uh, adapter cables. We'll get into those. Uh, let's, let's see how the box is. As you can see, uh, the new and improved Blue Eddy packaging. Uh, packing straps, edge protectors all over the place. Let's see what the inside reveals. Um, fully taped seams. Double layer, double layer cardboard. There's another box inside this box. So we have, it's double boxed. Each box is double layer cardboard. And then we get to the foam. Uh, accessory bag. Backwards. Behold the AC five hundred. Let's get it uh, downstairs and uh, I'll explain the differences. Okay, we are downstairs with uh, my existing AC three hundred setup. Uh, two B300s powering my house uh, via transfer switch or parts of my house. Uh, all my refrigeration, computer, internet, we've talked about that. Uh, and I have the uh, AC500 head unit down here. Um, it works with the B300s. You just need uh, the appropriate adapter cables. The uh, AC500 has a 150 amp uh, DC bus connection for the batteries. The B300S batteries that it is designed to primarily use are 150 amp rated. The B300s are uh, only 90 amp rated. So uh, to use the B300 with the AC500, you need this adapter cable. It has a uh, 150 amp connector on one end and a 90 amp connector on the other. I will uh, try to get a picture of that and post it somewhere. Um, the uh, ratings are stenciled on there rather nicely. So we have uh, two of those. And then we have the uh, standard accessory packet that includes the solar charge cable, the 15 amp uh, wall uh, charge plug, um, the uh, cigarette lighter adapter, uh, it is, in fact, the exact same accessory kit as what comes with the AC300. Um, the, the PV cord is the same. The wall plug is the same. 
I'm going to reuse my uh, 30 amp accessory charge cord with that. So uh, to do this upgrade, um, all I really need to do is shut this down, unplug everything, swap out the battery cables, and then physically <laughs> exchange the AC300 for the AC500 and plug everything back in. So uh, I think I'm going to put us on fast forward and we will do that. Powers up. I forgot to uh, I forgot to lock the the locks, <laughs> which everybody does. Okay, let me pull out the phone here. Uh, let's see. All right, let me fire up the Blue Eddy app. Let's see if I can add it. AC five hundred. We will bind it. I know, I know. I will do that later. Bluetooth. And there we are. We are charging from the grid. Apparently it is set to do that. I will adjust settings. Yeah, it's set to standard UPS. Let's go to PV priority. 30%, that's where I like it. Change the screen timeout. Let's keep the screen on because I'm gonna try and we'll see how, how much we can load this thing up. Check our firmwares. Oh yeah, there is some firmware. Uh, I'm going to cut this off, do my firmware updates. Um, I've got an array of heaters and loads here. I'm going to see if I can put this thing under full load and uh, perhaps even overload, and, and we'll see what happens. Uh, I'll be back in a minute. I have brought some things um, in doing the math to try to figure out what it would take to load and overload this thing to actually get it to shut off. I don't know if I can do it. Um, you get three standard 20 amp, uh, 15 20 amp combo you know, North American plugs. You get a uh, L1430 outlet, of which uh, only one of the two, yeah, let me get that out of the way, I'm doing some mock up. Uh, so you get an L1430, which is a 30 amp, 240 volt outlet. Uh, twist lock outlet. This is the same as is on the back of my house uh, for my generator interlock uh, But only one of the two uh, Hots is energized. I have not tested to see, see which one it is um, But it's only 120 volts, but they're using this to get uh, the, the amps 30 amps uh, You get a TT 30 outlet, which is a native 120 volt outlet at 30 amps uh, same same outlet as the AC300 has, uh, same large outlet as the AC200L has. Uh, very useful, especially for outdoor enthusiasts. And then you get a uh, the big boy, a 50 amp uh, NEMA 1450 uh, range outlet. Uh, but it's the same deal as the L1430. Only one of the two HOTS is energized. This is also a native uh, 240 volt outlet. You have 120 uh, ground neutral and another 120, but only one of these two uh, is live in this application. Uh, I have not tested either of those yet to see which is which, but uh, in my quest to, to apply load, I have down here an old uh, 30 amp compact power strip from, uh, from a server cabinet. Uh, it has a L530 plug on it, uh, meant to plug into data center power, and then it's got a uh, regular uh, NEMA 515s on the back. Uh, it has individual circuits on those. So I'm using that to run these three heaters over there. I have not tested this yet, but uh, those three heaters 
1500 watts, 1500 watts, and 500 watts. So that should be 3500 watts um, at 120 volts, which is right about 30 amps. So I put the TT30 adapter on here, and that is going to go in the TT30 plug. Very firm, which is good. And then I have uh, on this plug another 1500 watt heater. So that should be uh, 4,500 watts in total. And then I have uh, on this cord, this power strip, my shop vac, which is as far away as I can get it for noise reasons, already switched on. It draws about 1,500 watts. Uh, it's a, a large motor, so it's probably it's probably has a 2,500, uh, maybe even 3,000 uh, watt surge uh, on it. So we'll see if we can get there from here. This uh, this will be full load, I hope. Um, if if this doesn't get it, I've got one more plug left, and I will run around the house and see what I can find. Um, okay, let me get the app here. I do not have the inverter. I have not turned even turned the inverter on yet. So let's turn the inverter on. There we go. And the app shows we're bringing in 1,200 watts of solar. I do have it connected to wall power uh, to my 30 amp plug here. Uh, I did go in and set it at 30 amp. Uh, maximum grid input. I don't know if it's going to use that. We'll see if it leans on the grid as a crutch to help uh, with step loads in a similar way that the AC300 does. Um, we'll find out. We'll, uh, we'll learn this together. So we are currently bringing in 1300 watts of solar and a neat thing that the AC500 does that the AC300 does not is this solar button is live so I can click on it and I can see the breakdown of my two uh, solar arrays. On the uh, AC300, you cannot do that. Okay, we are at 88% battery, that is plenty. I am not going to do a full run to empty test. We're just, we're just gonna beat on it a little bit and, uh, and see what we do. Okay, so um, the app is running, the screen is running, things agree, um, power strip is Turned on. Let's bring on one heater. That should be 1500 watts. Second heater. Third heater. So that may go up a little bit beyond 3500, but it should settle down to 3500. Wow, almost 4000 watts. All right, 3,500 watts. Um, well, that's already more than the AC300 can do continuously, but uh, if you've watched my other videos, you saw that uh, in my very first house backfeed video with it, I overloaded it very substantially. I had it at uh, 4,500 watts when I was running the microwave and the toaster and it was still running my refrigerator and, and all that. And it, it, that was on the verge, according to the literature, that was the verge of it shutting down. Uh, but it, it, it withstood it and it kept going. Um, the the uh, AC500 is, uh, according to the documentation, obviously 5,000 continuous. I believe it says uh, 6,000 for uh, two minutes. Uh, up to 7,500 watts for uh, 60 seconds or 30 seconds or something like that. Uh, and then uh, the surge rate, the ultimate surge rating, according to the documentation, is 10,000 watts for this, this, this beast of a machine. Um, and I think that is for half a second. But, uh, yeah, let's see what we get. Um, interesting. My solar has fallen off. I'm only bringing in 500 watts right now. Is this a similar bug as my my AC300 had before a firmware update? Let me take off the heaters. Does solar come back or is there a cloud outside? 
Oh, it looks like there's a cloud. I can see out the window here. It's mostly sunny, but uh, okay, so we're at 500 watts. And you know what? This time I will just bring on all three heaters at once. So we're going to see three heaters hit this thing at one time. And uh, let's turn on that heater. So we're going to have a lot of load. 4,700 watts, 5,800 watts, 5,000 watts. Notice it's touching the grid input a little bit. That's, that's interesting. Well, we're almost at full load. Let me uh, let me turn on the shop back. Six thousand watts. Fifty nine twenty nine, according to the screen. And we have an alarm. It should be overload. Yep. I will clear that. Okay, so I can get to 6,000 watts. I need more. Um, let me, uh, you know what, I have, uh, what else can I put on this? I've got a fryer. Let me go get the fryer. Okay, I'm back. Um, I got my fryer. I moved the shop vac to uh, an extension cord and put it out the door so uh, we can still hear each other. And uh, let's... Let's slam this thing again. How about uh, how about this time? Oh, we're getting some solar back. This time I will unplug the grid input so it does not have that for assistance. And we'll see what it can do all by itself. Are we going to beep that I unplugged you? No. Okay, very nice. So grid input is now gone. We have some solar. We're at 85% charge. Inverter is on. Let's start with the fryer. I believe that is about 1600 watts. Oh, let me plug it in. I brought it down. Okay, everything is secure. Because there will be some amps. All right, turn on the fryer. Oh look, up up to 1100 watts of solar. Yes, very nice. And it just went away. Okay. Back to the fryer. Fryer, 1800 watts. Wow, that is more stout than I anticipated. That is fantastic. Okay, we've got the fryer. Let me... Turn on the heaters, one at a time. So we're 3,000 watts, 3,900. Forty-eight hundred watts. Let's let the heaters settle down, 4,700 watts. I still have one more heater. This is the little 500. So that should be just over 5,000 watts. It is beeping overload. That's nice. There will be more overload. So we're at 5,200 watts. I've got another 1,500. Yep, 
It did not like that. It just shut off. <clears throat> I didn't see what it got to. Inverter overload protection. Let's clear that back up. Turn off a couple heaters. Turn output back on. Too many heaters. Okay, we are at 3,300 watts. 4,700 watts. Should put us back at the 52. 50. We're at 5,200 watts, 5,160 according to this, and our alarm is back, which it should be. Let's add another 800. That's this guy on low. Let's see if we can get right at 6,000 watts. Okay, we're at... 5961, 5964, 5950. Let me just jump, bump the shop vac and see if it can start it up and hold it for like four or five seconds or if it shuts it down. Yeah, it did it. I didn't see on the app what it jumped to. Let me do it again and I'll watch the screen. Six thousand and forty three watts. Now we're at fifty eight something. Now the AC three hundred does have power lifting. Um, I don't know if that I don't think it's an enabled. I'm curious because, no, it is not enabled. The watts really didn't go up when I turned the shop back on. But I can very clearly hear it running. I am curious what that means. Does that mean we are dropping voltage? I have, where is my kilowatt meter? Let me turn off the fryer. Let me plug my kilowatt in here and see what we're doing. Okay, 121 volts, that is completely within specification. Let me turn the fryer back on. So the 121 volts is at uh, 4,472 watts. We turn the fryer back on. That puts us into overload. That is too much for the kilowatt. Kilowatts beeping overload at me. It still shows 121 volts at 6,000 watts, and then let me bump the, uh, bump the shop vac. Yeah, the shop vac at 6,000 watts, that we dropped down to uh, 110 volts. So with, with all this purely resistive uh, load, uh, dropping the volts drops the wattage, so that explains why that doesn't jump up too much. Also, the shop vac is, uh, an inductive load. So the two loads sort of fight each other a little bit there. But we're, we're sitting here at 6,000 watts. It's very happy. Um, the AC300 could not do this. Uh, AC500 is a beast of a machine. Uh, I have it again with my 30 amp input cord that is not plugged in. You can get an accessory 50 amp input cord 
It will not draw 50 amps to charge from that cord. Uh, it will charge at 5,000 watts continuous. I finally kicked the fan on. The fan has not been on this whole time. Wow. It took a lot. Um, also, the AC500 will draw up to 3,000 watts from solar. It still uses, again, the same solar input cord, but it will now take 15 amps from the solar array instead of 12. So you get uh, 1,500 watts per solar input, two inputs, 3,000 watts total. Uh, the AC300 would only draw 12 amps off of each input for a total of uh, 1,200 watts per, per, uh, per, the, per array. All right, it looks like I hit my two minute timer. It shut off on overload at, uh, at, at that. So I'm going to turn all this off and plug in my uh, transfer switch and get my house loads fired back up. Thanks for watching. I hope to show more, uh, show more AC500 stuff as I can think of things to do with it. Clearly, it can power a lot of things.